painting. Yeah, that. Oh yeah, sorry. No, this person was supposed to be next, and then I'll come over there. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you. No, no, no. Oh, now I'm really in a cluster over here. The woman that stood up. You. Um, I don't know, it's weird. It's weird to be in a room with this many people caring what I have to say. Um, I, don't, I don't begrudge it, I like it. I mean, it's, I guess it's kind of cool that this many people care what I have to say. <laughs> but you know, I really do, I think, uh, just try to live like a really, this is one thing, and when I come to something like this, I know what I'm getting into. But when I leave, it's like, you know, I try to, I try to, you know, I, I live as normal a life as I can, and I, I, I don't, there's no, for me, the line between my public self and my private self is very clear. Um, I don't need this kind of exposure or this kind of, uh, I, don't, I don't thrive on it in a way that's like a narcissistic kind of like devouring of this attention, but I, I also recognize that you're here because I am a conduit of something else, you know, I represent something for everybody in this room um, that is a part of the characters that I play and a part of the projects that I work on. And I love to talk about my work, I love working. I'm so blessed and grateful to be able to do it at this level. So I, I'm, I'm, I think I have a pretty, I think psychologically, uh, I have a pretty healthy relationship to it and a lot of therapy. <laughs> um, Okay, that person who's clearly not going to take no for an answer. Um, hi, in those eight years when you were trying to, to finally break in mm -hmm. and you were envisioning it, mm -hmm. what is exactly the same as you've envisioned it when you made it and mm -hmm. what is completely different from how you thought it was going to be? <laughs> um, I would say pretty much n nothing is how I envisioned it past. Like I, when I got out of school and I moved to Los Angeles, um, I had very specific goals that I set for myself, which were to get jobs, right? Like, when I got Heroes, I said to my agents, I got Heroes in September, right, when, when television generally comes back on the air, like new seasons of shows, and I said to my agents that August, here's what I want. I want to play a very interesting character in a recurring capacity on a new show that is a huge hit. That's literally what I said to my agents. And then, then that happened. Um, and and I, don't, you know, I don't think it happened because I said it, I think it happened because they listened and they put me out for things that I was right for and that happened to be the job that I got. From that point on, like, I didn't, I didn't, that was it for me. Like, oh, okay, like, I did what I needed to do, what I wanted to do, and then it was about setting a new goal. But then Star Trek happened and then it sort of ran away from me and my experience became something else. So all of this stuff, I, I never would have imagined what it would be like. I, I would have never dared to imagine that what this would be like. Um, so I've just had to roll with a lot of the stuff that came after Heroes and Star Trek in terms of, you know, the exposure and the fame element of it. Um, but I've tried to do it with as much, you know, just ease as possible. And I think as long as you stay open to what's possible, then anything's possible and you can sort of fill up any experience that presents itself. So uh, I would say that, you know, the, um, but the thrill of getting to do this kind of work, getting to work consistently, that is something that, the, the feeling that it gives me is something that I had always dreamed of and always hoped for and I'm so grateful that I actually get to feel it every day. Yeah, thanks. We got, I've been,